Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Sherrod Mubarak, MD. I'm a physician here at West Broward Internal Medicine in Tamarack, Florida, and I practice general internal medicine or primary care medicine, if you will. So today I'm going to talk to you about corporatization of medicine. I've been a physician now since 1989, so it's over 30 years, and I've watched a lot of changes in medicine. Some of it good, certainly we've had great advances in healthcare, including in surgery and cardiology and some of the antibiotics that we have and great care in lots of areas of advancement. Not as many, let's say, in, in treatment of cancer or in treatment of Alzheimer's, but hopefully those are around the corner. What I'd like to talk to you about is the changes in structure of medicine. So I'm a primary care internist. I work in a primary care office, which I own and run, and I've done so for the entirety of my uh, practice in medicine. But I'm one of the few that's remaining that still owns his own practice and can pretty much call the shots. Now, it ends up that I have to do everything in the practice, including manage the employees. My wife helps with that. But most of the physicians now don't want to do all that. So when they come out of residency, they join an existing group, often owned by a corporate entity, which unfortunately now is more and more a Wall Street company, bent on squeezing the last bit of profit out of the system. That same process has occurred with hospitals. In fact, that occurred first. Gone are the days that Sisters of Charity ran hospitals for the benefit of the community and were not looking for profit out of a hospital center. All of the urgent cares are now big corporate entities all of the nursing homes are run by big corporate entities. And so there might be a few here and there left that are still run by individuals. But for the most part, individuals are out of health care. Physician ownership of practices is mostly gone, if not entirely. And so when you enter the healthcare system, you'll be entering it with the idea that you'll be seeing a physician who mostly works there as an employee. Now, is there something wrong with that? Well, of course, there's nothing wrong with being employed by a corporation as long as their needs and your needs are parallel. Now, as we can see, they're not often that way. Florida just passed a rule to reduce the number of hours that a health aid helps a person in a nursing home. Now, that to me is a catastrophe because already when I go to rehab centers and I see my patients, I see them waiting for care. But the powers to be are reducing the number of hours of care for that person that was previously demanded and in law. So as we see, the corporate entities are interested in reducing the amount of expense that they have by reducing physician numbers relative to patient, nursing numbers relative to patient, and they control that entirely and the employee has not much to say about it. At least in my opinion, corporatization of healthcare hasn't been the best thing. We saw the pharmacies go from corner pharmacies owned by a pharmacist to almost entirely owned by large corporations. And we can see how the pharmacist behind the counter really works so hard to fill hundreds if not thousands of prescriptions per day and even though they claim that they'll speak to you about your prescriptions, they really have no time to do so. So in my opinion, corporatization medicine hasn't been good. So what's the answer? If you can find a physician that owns his own practice and will give you the time you need because there's no one over the shoulder telling them how much time they can spend with a patient or how many patients they need to see during the day, then that's the way to go. So let's say you joined our practice and I mentioned I see six patients in the morning, six in the afternoon, but you decided to go over to one of these larger centers which do provide some services. For example, they may have a pharmacy in the office or they may have x-rays in the office, which are nice, which are convenient, but you don't get to see the same doctor all the time because they have 12 doctors who rotate. Or when you do call to be seen, they give you a slot, but you wait for two hours to see the doctor. And when you do see the doctor, it's a 10 minute visit and it's over. I've actually had patients come into my practice and I come into the room and I sit and they look at me and say, doctor, you sat. 
And I wonder, what are they talking about? But when they tell me they've been going to one of these large centers, the physician comes in and never sits because the time doesn't allow it. I had one physician who works in one of these practices and they're, let's say, bonus for seeing a lot of patients. And he's told me that he saw 76 patients in one day. And I said, you mean in one week? He said, no, I saw 76 patients today. That's impossible. That's what I would call a drive-by, not an office visit. Therefore, I don't think that corporatization of medicine has been very, very good for healthcare because it demands productivity, which goes against the time necessary to get to know a patient, to really ask him the problems that they have, to ask open-ended questions so the patient feels comfortable telling you all about their lives. And sometimes you find something out that the patient themselves doesn't even know, but you recognize it as a physician as a problem. Something unusual that I do with my patient, I let them have my cell phone number. And it's not really a secret of any kind. If you call my office after hours, I'm the only person on call. So the office says, we're closed now. Here's Dr. Mabork's cell number. If you have a problem, call him. Now, amazingly, my patients never abuse that privilege. They call me when they need to, in the evenings, at night, on Saturdays, on Christmas, on New Year's. And it really does become important, especially in seniors that I see, who have problems come up and they don't know what to do. This is a problem. Should I go to the hospital for this? Is this something you can handle? And I welcome it and actually find it to be quite useful that they can reach out to me anytime. And of course, they find it very helpful that they can reach me anytime with any problem that they have. It's been quite good for the practice. Now, I also see my own patients in the hospitals, even though, frankly, that is not a financially beneficial thing for me to go to hospital and spend an hour to see one patient, but that creates continuity of care. And that's the next part I want to talk about, because in the old days, when physicians had their own practices, they would see the patient in the office, they would see the patient when they got sick in the hospital, they would often see the patient in a rehab center, and back to the office, and that created continuity of care so that that patient also was happy to see a friendly face when they were ill in the hospital. But now we have hospitalists who have taken over the hospital admission process, not for me because I insist on doing my own, but for most patients. And then we have rehab specialists who work in the rehab centers, and when the patients go there, they get a new doctor, not for me because I follow my own patients to rehab centers. So that continuity is lost, and if you know anything about the healthcare of older people, when we have dozens of medications and dozens of problems, the transfer of information from hospital to rehab center, from office to hospital, is not always accurate, and so continuity gets disrupted and healthcare of the individual suffers. So in my opinion, continuity of care is paramount to the care of the individual, especially the complex kind of internal medicine geriatric patient that we see in my practice, and the corporatization of medicine, which has created separate silos. Here's the office, here's the hospital, here's the rehab, none of which are interconnected, none of which talk to each other, and the physicians are different in each silo, does not benefit the patient. I personally don't see it helping, and I hope that we can undo it, but to be truthful, once the corporate world finds something they can find profit in, it's difficult to undo anything. I wish you well. I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something from it. Have a wonderful day.